Welcome back everyone, welcome back to the old car shop and in this video it's going to be something kind of special We're just going to go through a quick little mail day that we had uh, come in today And I didn't want to open this up without it being recorded somehow just in case someone else ever Came across one of these and wanted to see what an opening was like So we purchased this on the secondary market on eBay um, It was purchased as is uh, The box is as you can see pretty beat up And so we messaged the seller and we asked them if it was um, You know what the deal was And they actually said it was still new and unused So we purchased the box off of them even though it was pretty beat And we're going to do a little opening here on camera So you guys can see what's inside of it so let's, uh, without further ado, see what's in this beautiful vintage Japanese starter deck. It would usually come with a VHS as well, but this is just the uh, contents minus the VHS. It is usually sealed with a wrapper as well as that, but this one didn't have the seal on it. So we're going to check it out here. All right, you get here. Beautiful artwork. Love that old Sugimori art. Um, looks like you get some sort of a play mat, so that's cool. You get like a squirtle. Oh, yeah, there we go. There are the decks as well. So you get a play mat. It's the squirtle and Bulbasaur play mat. So let's see if we can get a little look at the Bulbasaur side of things. There we go. Probably not enough space to all unfold it but we'll set that off to the side really really neat and then get into the meat the chunk of this uh, video so in these starter decks you get yourself a beautiful Japanese Chansey whoops let's get it on camera a beautiful Japanese Chansey coin the purple holographic version now the Japanese versions are a little smaller than the English versions and Believe it or not, <laughs> these coins are pretty collectible, so we're, we're happy to have that. You get these small little damage counters. These are for playing the game, keeping track of damage and health that's left on your Pokemon. Nice little vintage. And then you get your two starter decks, so we're going to do our best to get these out. We're going to take it out real carefully here. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So the first one here is... Wow. Well, without further ado, you can, you guys can see this is the Blastoise. So we're going to slide this little guy off right carefully and put it down there. And let's go ahead and get into this bad boy together. So these were the <laughs> where you would get this original artwork of Blastoise. It also has the starter deck logo there with the little squirtle. So let's get it in its sleeve there. Very nice. Let's check the condition on it. Looking pretty good so far. Ooh, baby. It does look real good. Yeah, so it looks like this was a beautiful unplayed. It looks like at least. Yep, that was on the sleeve right there. Beautiful. We love to see that. Okay. Nice. Yeah, that's uh, that's right there, a win. And then we're gonna see some other beautiful pulls here too. So as you, with most Japanese seal product, they have these little pesky little tabs that are on the sides. You just kind of have to be careful when you're slipping those off so you don't damage the sides or the corners. Um, but Japanese cardstock is actually pretty sturdy. And so usually speaking, you're pretty good. They can handle a little more. So look at that nice squirtle artwork there. A lot of these artworks were originals, so they only released them in this starter deck. Um, so really cool to see some of these Pokemon. Some of the, the attacks would be the same, but sort of the um, artwork would be a little bit different. And so a lot of this might be, and they're all numbered. See, their numbers down there on the bottom right. Let's check some of the conditions of these as we go along. Yeah, they're, uh, they're nice. They're definitely nice, so we're very happy about that. Interestingly enough, the energies are also, the energies are also numbered. So every single energy in this deck should have a number down there. So down in the bottom corner right there. Oh, here we go. Now we're getting to one of our favorites, this Squirtle right here. This Squirtle is so cute. Like the, uh, under the berry tree, 
number 37 there. We love this Squirtle. Oh, the centering looks pretty decent on some of them. It's a little off. It's a little bit top heavy on a few of them, but we're not mad. So this is for sure some of the more, uh, one of the more interesting products you're going to see on our channel. You don't see these things pop up very often. And when you do, they're very expensive. So if I'm not mistaken, at the time of shooting this video, they go for close to 400 to 500 US dollars, depending on where you're buying it. You can get a little more, a little less, but um, we ended up picking up for uh, quite a steal, probably about half of that. And so we had to see and check our, take our chances at it. But we're happy we did because this is certainly something we would love to share with you guys. And it's just something that should be on the internet. Whenever someone opens up one of these or checks out one of these starter decks, I feel like it should be recorded, documented. Oh, baby. Yeah, there we go. We love this Arcanine. There's a web series of this Arcanine as well. So this is the one of the artworks, but there's also a, another Japanese exclusive, well... We didn't realize it was in this starter deck, so that's kind of a cool little bonus. We get two of those Arcanines for our collection now. Even the energies are numbered. They number down if you are keeping close eye down here, 31 there. So if you are a collector of this for a binder, it would be really cool to see it all on a binder sheet or all on a binder page with the numbers kind of going up or down, depending on how you wanted to organize with both the decks. I think that would look really, really nice, especially some of the artworks that we haven't seen before. And you'd even have a place for the energies in there because each energy is different. So kind of a fun product. We're going to check out the Venusaur deck next. We're going to kind of go through this as quickly as we can and sleeve these up. We are going to be grading pretty much every single one of these without many, the energies might not get graded, but the energies that could get a 10 will probably be graded. Who are we kidding? This is such a cool product with these unique symbols and you know different artworks that we may end up just grading every card. We'll see how it goes. But if you are watching this, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, like, comment, sub. This isn't the usual type of uh, content that we do, but it is something fun. And I thought it's something that you guys might enjoy as well. So uh, we thought, you yeah, know, what the heck? We'll do this on camera. But back in the good old days, when you would have, you know, your parents would have bought this for you at the store and come home with it, you would have had two decks to play with here. So you got the, looks like the Blastoise deck here is what we're going through. And then we're going to go through the Venusaur deck. So you and your brother, sister, your parent, your friend, your foe alike. You could both have decks to battle it out and learn the game. Ooh, we're getting some great artwork coming up here. This Squirtle is another banger. So this one right here. Um, you do get a couple copies of the Squirtles in here, which is nice. And they're different arts, which is really, really cool. I was just uh, in awe of so many different great artworks in this deck. And so there are a couple, looks like two of these Squirtles so far we've come across. We like that though. This is our favorite one. The one we just came across was nice too, but this one's probably our favorite. Japanese cardstock is very much so um, better quality than English too. And it's funny because most people prefer the English, but there is a subset of the population who does really enjoy the Japanese cards mostly because they are the actual real first edition cards. They were printed before first edition English were. And so if you really are looking for the rookie first edition cards, you typically do have to look for the Japanese in most cases. There are a few exceptions, but they're um, very much so different than the English card stock. They're made in different factories. They were made with different card stock, just different over time how they've aged and i will say the japanese cards age much better than the english cards did so if you find yourself being a japanese collector uh, you probably will find that your cards have sort of held up and the card stock seems to be a little bit superior to the english stock that being said as a english collector and english lover myself there's something about these gold borders that just kind of it doesn't necessarily do it for me. I need that bright yellow thick border that the English offers. Just to get that same hint of nostalgia uh, that I do. With the modern cards, it's not as big of a deal. But as far as vintage is concerned, it's just always English for me. But it is a very, very cool thing to see these Japanese exclusive arts. Because some of these artworks were never released in English. 
So we're going to be getting into the next deck here, which is the Venusaur deck. Try to get through these energies. These energies are, uh, even though they are just energies, we think they they deserve to get sleeved, especially because they're individually numbered. These decks are just so rare to see, so it's worth at least putting in a little bit of the extra effort there. Yeah, we, oh yeah, there we go. We love that. That's a uh, great artwork for War Turtle. And shout out to our friend Josh for the Gliz. He's a Gliz protect, Gliz, Gliz collector. We might have to save that one for him. But yes, these are very much so fun to open. And if you ever find yourself with a chance to open one of these and check them out, I highly, highly recommend you do so. Okay, so let's get into that Venusaur deck here. So hopefully we're seeing the same quality as the Blastoise deck with the Venusaur. Because uh, the Blastoise deck, all the cards came out really, really crispy. So let's just slide this right off real gently like. And we'll put our deck down and take the hollow off the top and check it out. Ooh, this one's got the Pikachu in it. Mm -mm, this is going to be a nice one. So they are, uh, because of the hollow, they have a slight little bow. But that shouldn't necessarily affect it too much. Let's check it out there. Oh yeah, that looks pretty good. That doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it whatsoever. We'll take that. We'll be happy with that. All right, so we have our Venusaur there. Very nice, very nice. Then coming up to a very, very special Pikachu. We didn't see this in English, not that I can remember. Maybe we did. Maybe it was on a promo card that I can't recall. Maybe one of those Black Star promos that I'm not thinking about, but it's a fun one to have for sure. It's another good artwork. Coughing. <laughs> Uh, with a little kind of hand-drawn, cute little cutesy bubble coming out there, doing a smog attack, it looks like. Definitely into some of the artworks that they use. Old School Jinx. This is the OG Jinx. This is another artwork that we really like. Just the hand-drawn, pastel -y element of it is just really, really pretty, and I like the um, colors and everything of the card. It matches well. I've always liked the old Jinx cards there. They're... Uh, Unfortunately, she didn't get very many hollows or anything, though, so you never really see the love for Jinx. She didn't get, like, an EX or a Level X or anything, so what's up with that? No love for Jinx, so uh, shout out in the comments if you guys want to see, like, in the coming, an ultra-rare Jinx card, because I, I bet you there are Jinx collectors out there. Speaking of collectors, this is... I can't just go on about Jinx when we got this amazing, amazing Arita. Look at this. This little guy right here, this has got to be one of the coolest Bulbasaurs that there are. Uh, so yeah, loving this deck, loving all of the cards that we're seeing come out of it. Um, even the energies, you know, even the energies <laughs> were, were pretty easy to please, especially with this kind of stuff. Let's get a new pack of sleeves here uh, and keep going through this deck. Uh, this is the type of thing, though, that once again, that we don't usually make this kind of content, but it's just one of those things that as we were um, unboxing it, I feel like it was worthy of making a video. And, oh, here we go. Something else really special is Ivysaur. This is a very cool Ivysaur art that I've never even seen. So this is the first time for me opening up this deck because I've seen these cards individually graded. I've seen some of the hits and I've seen what the starters look like, but I haven't seen all of them apparently because that Ivysaur has always eluded me. That one's really cool. And so once again, this deck right here is one of my favorite Japanese products. It's probably one of the least talked about ones that you'll find. It's out there. I mean, I think there are other videos out there about this deck. So you can definitely, we won't be the only one, uh, but we hope that you've enjoyed this. This is definitely going to be something that once we do send off these and get the grades for them, we'll probably uh, at least talk about it in our podcast. So if you haven't already, please like, comment, and sub and check out our podcast card cardboard hands um, and we're going to be uh, kind of just enjoying the rest of this little opening here look at this this little guy his face oh man that's so good yeah this is one of those things that I do want to be able to look back on so I'm happy if you guys are enjoying this as well 
But at the very least, this is certainly a historic uh, opening that if you are thinking about opening one of these up, maybe you have one on your shelf. If you're not wanting to open it and you want to see someone else do it, you can at least watch our opening. I, I probably didn't do a great job at making you not want to open it, though, because this thing is just a lot of fun. I mean, we open a lot of vintage packs and currently speaking, um, you can probably buy a a base set booster pack from English for the same price that you could buy one of these. And how much fun have you seen us have while opening this up and how much enjoyment and how much, you know, wonder have we had just seeing the new artworks for the first time. They're not even new artworks, they're old artworks, but we are seeing them for the first time. And so there is one of their, in my opinion, this is one of the products out there that's just super, super unknown. But really, really cool. Hopefully now after watching this, you uh, you are aware of this product. And if you see some of the arts that you really like, you can at least pick up a couple of these artworks specifically. Like maybe you're a Meowth collector and you didn't know about this Meowth. That's such a great Meowth. It's so good. And so it's one of those things that it may just, uh, you may find something that you haven't seen before. It is, it is going to be interesting to see how these things grade. Oh, this is going to be a nice one. Uh, there are lots of collectors out there for this base set. Pikachu of all its variants. And so I already know that this is going to be something that if I can pull a 10 would be really nice. Looks good to me. Looks pretty good. And so we're pretty happy about that. Let's see these energies in here we think there's going to be a couple more hits left to go here so i'm pretty sure there's still going to be a couple more bangers at the end of this deck since it is already kind of pre-shuffled i think that the way it works is it's uh, shuffled in such a way that you you're not supposed to shuffle it when you take it out of the package they do that to teach you the deck it's meant to teach you how to play with a one-on-one -on -one situation where you kind of follow the turn-by-turn -turn situation. And then, once you know the rules, how to basic the basic game plays, then you kind of shuffle it up and play. So these ones were never used. It was just the wrapper was taken off. I assume someone actually used the DVD, or not the DVD, the VHS, but didn't use the cards, which is actually quite funny to me. Because these days, it would be the other way around. But it is a... A cool thing to be able to see here like this we hope you guys have enjoyed it there's a couple more big ones like this one right here little Raichu this is something uh, that you saw I believe it was in versus series the versus series we saw that Raichu but it's nice to see it in a different shape or form because versus series actually had that e-reader oh and another Bulbasaur on the back how beautiful is that? Drowsy, the OG Drowsy, but the Bulbasaur, the Arita Bulbasaur that we love. Looking super cute. And we do appreciate you guys tuning in here. So uh, we hope you enjoyed the opening. Let's just kind of quickly recap what this little opening entailed. We were quite happy to be able to pull a pretty nice, looks like pretty gradable looking Venusaur and Blastoise. We will be grading out this entire deck for the most part. Anything that looks like it was um, good, we will. But we got the decks here. All sleeved up and good to go. We'll top loader them. Really, really awesome, awesome experience. We appreciate you guys all coming through. Tell us in the comments which deck you like better, which you think has more heat in it, whether it's the, oh man, that Pikachu, whether it's the Venusaur deck that we just showed, or the Blastoise deck, which we're about to show here. And if you had to pick one of these two decks to have, like if you were in the in the hot seat and you had your parents just brought this home for you, you had to choose Venusaur or Blastoise and you just kind of look through the decks, which one would you want to have and sit down in front of you? What are you taking? Funny they didn't give Charizard a deck, huh? <laughs> well, thanks again, everyone. And let's end on the beautiful, beautiful Blastoise here. The lovely Blasty Boy here. Let's show him off. And his glory of a top loader.
And until the next time, guys, you stay classy out there.